I'm like, okay, cool. I've got my general idea here to find an area between two curves. I'm gonna work out um, the area of the top one and then subtract the area of the bottom one. That's the overall path through this question. Now I need to knuckle down and get the details. I need to know where A and B are, for instance. Where are those start points and end points? And then I'm gonna substitute in um, G of X take away F of X, okay? So let's go ahead um, and work out what the intersection points are. So to find intersection points, it's always important to tell us what you're doing and why you're doing it. Uh, like yesterday we saw, we are going to solve simultaneously in order to work out where do these two parabolas collide. So that's going to be f of x equals g of x. This is the thing that we want to solve, okay? So uh, let's go ahead and uh, substitute in. I've got x squared minus 4x plus 5, and then I've got minus x squared plus 6x plus 17. Okay, so in order to solve this, I'm going to get everything on the left-hand side. So let me give you a second to do that, unless you already have. Um, go ahead and post in the comments what expression you get on the, uh, the left-hand side. If you get everything away from the right-hand side and add and subtract terms to make it all equivalent. What are you going to get on the left? Any takers? Very nice, okay, well done parent. Okay, so uh, what's the way we're gonna do this? Well, I'm going to add to both sides. I'm gonna add an x squared. I'm gonna subtract a six x and I'm gonna subtract a 17 because if I do that to both sides, you can see that's just gonna clean out the right hand side, right? So what does that leave me with? Uh, I've got two lots of x squared on the left hand side Minus 4x minus 6x does give me minus 10x and then 5 take away 17 that'll give me minus 12 and then that clean zero on the right hand side. So you can see here, um, I can do better than this, right? Everything is even, how convenient. So I'm going to divide through by 2 and that'll give me a much neater quadratic to work with. So x squared minus 5x minus 6 is what I'm getting if I divide through by 2. And so now I'm searching for a factorization. Go ahead and post in the chat if you can get me the two factors for those. What are the two numbers we're going to be using? Be really careful with your plus and minus signs. Okay, yeah, nicely done, fantastic. Okay, so Alexis is in first thumbs up for getting there. So x take away six, x plus one. Do those numbers add to negative five? Yes, they do. Do they multiply to negative six? Yes, they do. So fantastic, things are looking good. Now, what was the point of doing that? Why did I factorize? The point was, looking back at my own working, I was trying to find intersection points. That's what I was after, right? So therefore, I'm gonna solve this and I'm just gonna say x is equal to negative one or six. Now, when we were having a look at uh, some of the areas yesterday, you noticed that we got more than one solution, and we had to look at our solutions and say, wh which is the one that's important, okay? Because sometimes one is irrelevant, like some of you noticed, oh, it's like, oh, we're in the first quadrant, I don't need these negative answers, right? But in this case, negative one and six, they both matter, because they are both the values that I'm looking for. Um, and in fact, you can see this on the graph here, let me go to a different color. This over here does, sure enough, look like negative one, and this over here does, sure enough, look like six. So this is a good indicator that we've found the correct values. So using our sketch, we've put the relevant information on. Um, now I've worked out A and B, and now I'm gonna do G of X take away F of X. So let's have a go at this. Continuing my working, uh, my total area is going to be equal to, let me slide it in right underneath because um, I have that big honking diagram on the right hand side. I'm now integrating from negative one to six. The first one will be g of x and then I'll subtract f of x. So what was g of x? It was uh, minus x squared plus six x plus 17. That's with respect to x and then Hmm, am I gonna fit it there? I'll fit it just above that set of axes there. I'm gonna subtract the integral, same boundaries, 
of f of x. Well, that's going to be, uh, what did we say? x squared, I think, was minus 4x plus 5 from memory. Let's just scroll up and see if I got that right. Yay, hooray, I have a decent memory. Okay, so I've got my g of x and my f of x, and you can see I'm subtracting in this particular order, because I know one's on top and one's on the bottom. Now at this point, I'm go again going to refer to one of the things that Mrs. Lee's taught us about the properties of a definite integral. I want you to notice that we've got the same boundaries for the first integral from negative 1 to 6 as we do for the second integral, right? They're both from negative 1 to 6. So as a consequence, we can actually combine these two integrals into one. And this is going to be sort of a common theme uh, all the way through this. Like integrals are work. There are a lot of work to go ahead, think about the calculus, do your, you know, increase indices, divide, then all the substitution, like every single term that's there, you're going to have to substitute two things, the upper lower bound and the lower bound. So anywhere we can combine different integrals into one, um, we will. So I'm going to do that because the boundaries are identical. I can say, I think I'm going to need a little more space down here. I can say this integral is from negative 1 to 6 because they both match. And then because I'm subtracting these two, one from the other, I'm just going to go through term by term and collect like terms. Just be careful when you do your subtraction. It's going to be minus x squared minus x squared. Let me just say that one more time slowly. This minus x squared here, I'm going to subtract x squared. So that, of course, leaves me with minus 2x squared. Then you've got a 6x, I'm going to subtract negative 4x, so it's going to be plus 10x. And then lastly, I've got this 17 and I'm going to subtract 5, so that gives me plus 12 with respect to x. Now hopefully what we've just put into that uh, integrand there, the thing being integrated, hopefully that looks familiar because we just worked with terms like that up above just here. I think you can fit it on the same screen actually, just here when we were solving these two simultaneously. That's because the way we did it was we got everything together on one side, which is effectively what we did here in the integral. Okay. Now I can do one step better than this, um, just like before when I was finding the points of intersection, um, I took out a factor of 2, I'm going to do that again. So factor of 2 out the front, negative 1 to 6, and then everything else comes for the ride. I'm dividing everything by 2. And there I am. So I'm looking for, at this point before I go any further, can I just get some thumbs up if you're okay with that? Um, the things I'm checking are, were you okay with the graph um, and how I did that? And were you okay with this integral? I, I haven't integrated yet, obviously, but looking to make sure. Yep, fantastic. Excellent. Thank you so much, everyone. Good to see. All right, so I can, I'm ready to integrate now. Okay, so I've got this two out the front. It's just a constant coefficient, and now I'm going to actually do the integration here. So it's negative x cubed on 3, plus 5x squared on 2, plus 6x. And my boundaries are from negative 1 to 6. Okay, so I'm ready to go ahead and do this. I've got to do it term by term, and uh, I've got to make sure I'm careful with all of my signs and all the rest. So I'm going to draw some big brackets here. And then they just go through one at a time. So I'm getting minus 216 on 3. If you didn't know that 6 cubed was 216, uh, no problems. Your calculator will help you there. But you're going to encounter, you're going to be doing lots of cubing and high powers. So you'll encounter this number. It's not that I'm super smart. I've just done this calculation a lot. I've got 5 lots of x squared, which is uh, 6 squared. So 5 lots of 36 divided by 2. And then I've got 36 hanging out on the end one more time. There's my upper bound, and then I'm going to subtract my lower bound. So let's put in negative 1 now. I've got negative, watch out, <laughs> there's a minus x cubed there, right? So now I've got negative 1 cubed, which is negative 1. That's divided by 3, plus 5 lots of negative 1 squared. I'm going to put that 5 back up the top, which is 1, all divided by 2, and then 6 lots of negative 1. And I'm going to end my curly brace. So at this point, you're probably going to reach for your calculator. In fact, I'm, I'm going to reach for my calculator. And um, let's see what you get. See if you crunch your numbers and get exactly the same thing that I do. Let's go ahead and evaluate this. Be careful with your input and your fractions as well. 
spare a thought for those of us who are so old that when we were putting things like this into our calculators, our fractions didn't look like fractions. You just had one line across the top and you were kind of like, oh, I've got fractions on fractions, this looks ridiculous. So at least your fractions will tell you when they are what they say they are. Make sure you, you've got all your minus signs there. One over three plus five over two minus six. And make sure you close all your brackets, okay. Now, um, before I post my answer, I'm actually gonna wait and see if um, people are gonna be willing to share with me in the chat what they've got. I've got a number right here, uh, and I'll prove it by holding it up to the camera in a second, but I wonder how many of you have got an answer, and if you can share it with us. <laughs> Karen's got an answer, that's fantastic. Let's see if anyone else has the same one. <laughs> yes. Uh, up, thumbing, thumbing up, thumbing. That's, that sounds weird. Giving a thumbs up to someone who's already given an answer is, is the cheap way, but that's fine. Thank you, Abby, for going ahead and actually typing those symbols. I appreciate the effort, well done. Okay, so I'm encouraged because let's, I don't know if my, um, Webcam's gonna manage that, but there you go. I think that's slightly visible. Is, what do you think, Mrs. Lees? Can you give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Can you read that? Too blurry? I don't know, that's fine. Uh, just angle it towards the window. Uh, that way? Light? That way. That way. Almost. It's, it's, it's 343 on three, like you guys got. So, fantastic, well done. Let me write that in, 343 on three. Now, uh, there's only a single region here, so we've actually done everything. We can say, well, I should say, well, there's only a single region because we've already done the top takeaway bottom. It's all been sort of baked into our working. So I'm gonna conclude there. The area is 343 on three square units. Ta-da! Done. So that was like in terms of the integration, that was no harder than what you've done before. Um, but you do have to be careful with all of your terms, and where possible, you are reducing you know multiple integrals into one, and then you get this value. Okay. Now I said I was only going to do one example, and um, I partly lied because I'm going to give you a half of an extra example that's based on this one, okay? We're not gonna do the full working, but it is a really important uh, caution to take when you're dealing with areas um, that are between curves, okay? So 